Hi, everyone. Okay, I'm just going to start. Chapter four, <clears throat> socialization. So we've talked up till now about society and culture and all the things that uh, make up a society and make up our culture. And socialization is how you learn to be a part of the culture and how you learn to be a part of society. Socialization is what human beings have in place of instinct. Our uh, society is too complicated for us to be born with it in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Human beings are so complex that we're born with our brains um, not being able to do, and our bodies, a whole lot. Right? A horse can get up and walk around pretty soon after birth, but we can't. So we need a way to teach human beings how to survive and feed themselves and get through the world. And so socialization is the way we do that. And it's also how society, which I've talked before about being kind of this um, entity that wants to reproduce and keep itself alive, is able to do that. So it passes culture from one generation to the next. And we used to have this big debate um, in science and the social science about the idea of um, nature versus nurture and you know which which one was it were we born um, how we are or was it all environment and we now know that nature versus nurture is um, not a meaningful question that it's both nature and nurture and there's a saying that <coughs> excuse me that nature loads the gun and nurture fires it. So nature loads the gun and nurture fires it. And what that means is that you can be born with all kinds of tendencies um, and predispositions, but based on your environment, um, it determines whether or not these things may happen. So in my family, I was born with a predisposition for major depression. Major depression runs in my family um, and it tends to run in families, um, but it would not, you know, may have gone my whole life um, without it if I had not had events that triggered the depression. And then once you've had a major depression, you're much more likely to have another one. Right? So we're not just victims of our genes. Right? But we're not just independent players, right? It's like our genes kind of push us in different directions. Um, and so we're a product of this biology, the society that we grow up in, and then our personal experience, right? What we learn and how we grow up. Um, and the influence of society is hard to overestimate. Human beings are social beings. We are wired to look at faces. Babies, as soon as they're born, um, will track faces uh, more than they will other shapes. And one of the ways we know the importance of human contact is what we see when children don't have it. And neglect is the most common form of child abuse. It's the most common reason children are brought into social services um, and sometimes neglect is just not being able to put a roof over your child um, not being able to make meet their basic needs but there's a, another kind of neglect and neglect is when you're not responding to your child's needs um, emotional needs and other needs so when you're born and you cry and you might be physically uncomfortable, hungry, wet, um, lonely, or scared. You cry, and someone comes and meet your needs to meet your need, and then you're comforted, <clears throat> and um, you know you you go back to that state of calm, and then you get into a state of distress. You express it. Someone comes, and that happens thousands and thousands and thousands of times as you're growing up. And what happens in neglect or abuse 
is that a baby or child expresses a need and they're ignored or sometimes they're ignored, sometimes someone comes in and yells at them, or sometimes someone comes in and comforts them, and sometimes they're ignored, or sometimes someone comes in and comforts them, and sometimes someone comes in and hits them. Right? So they're, they're not adequately able to get their needs met. And going through that cycle thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of times as you're growing up is how you learn that the world is basically a safe place and that you're basically safe. And so what we see in children who experience neglect uh, is that their amygdala um, sends signals of danger more easily. So the fight or flight response is activated more easily. And <coughs> One of the problems with the fight or flight, and it's it's fight, flight, but you can also freeze. There are other, you know, and shut down. There are other, it's not just fight or flight, but um, but that, you know, kind of danger, the signal where you get the adrenaline and the fear and you're alert, right? The, the pathways from the amygdala to your, um, you know, the, the you brain, right, the higher brain, it's they're they're like super highways, right? It's like bam, you're in danger. Well, the pathways from the U brain back to the amygdala, which is like part of the crocodile brain, are like these country roads that wind, you know, around valleys and go through jungles and brush, and they're one lane. And what that means is that while the amygdala can very quickly, very easily tell you that you're in danger, it's a lot harder for your higher brain to tell the amygdala that you're not. So activation, especially when you've experienced neglect, is much faster and at a much lower threshold. And along with that, being able to um, calm yourself is also more difficult. So, you know, I may get upset about something, but then I'm able to think, um, well, you know, let me look at this from a different perspective, or, um, you know, uh, this feels like a catastrophe right now, but let me go home and get some sleep. I probably won't feel this way tomorrow. Whereas someone who hasn't had that kind of cycle and care will not feel that way. Um, my daughter, who is going to be nine on Saturday, um, experienced neglect um, when her mom was pregnant. Her mom uh, was under a great deal of stress, and we know that uh, maternal stress has an impact on children. And she was also neglected uh, the first three months of her life. Um, and <clears throat> I see some interesting uh, behaviors in her um, and you know one of the things that I see in her which I have learned is um, common in adopted children and really common in children adopted through foster care is that she doesn't ever want to throw anything away she doesn't want anything to be gone ever um, and you know like when she outgrows clothes you know, she doesn't want me to put them anywhere, do anything with them. If she doesn't finish a meal at a restaurant, she wants to take everything home. Um, you know, I have to like throw things away um, behind her back um, or she won't let me, right? We had this big tree fall in the, during the storm, this 80 foot tree fell across the backyard and you know, they're cutting down now it's what two weeks later and there we finally got um, someone we share a driveway and there the neighbors got someone to come in and cut it down and she doesn't want them to take away the brush um, from the tree and I think that if you think about it, it makes sense that um, you know she would feel uh, threatened by loss um, so 
Now, you know, I'm kind of anthropomorphizing. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with it, but it's a common thing uh, for children who've experienced neglect. So, so we know from what happens to children who don't get um, the social connection that they need, uh, the um, how important it is. And there's research coming out right now, um, which is interesting, kind of fun to read, showing that. Uh, social rejection and social pain shows up <clears throat> in the same part of the brain as physical pain. So the pain you feel when you know you're pushed out of a group or something like that happens and you feel like my life is over, it's the same kind of pain. It's real pain that that sense that you know well you've gotten a fight with your friend and so now life is over. Um, so. Um, the, la the, the, the task for this first video on socialization is to watch a film um, about a young girl named Jeannie who was discovered, who uh, um, was discovered, you know, neglected by her parents um, and basically turned into an experiment by, in my opinion, a lot of uh, uh, morally questionable researchers, but things were done differently uh, back in that time period. So it's to watch the film. Um, it's about an hour long and just write a summary of it. So the link to the film is there and um, <clears throat> the summary is just a, a Google form. Okay, and that's it for video one. It's nice to be back. <clears throat>